Hey everyone. All right. I think I'm live. All right. Hey everyone, Monica Corrado here, the Gap Chef. I am coming to you live now. I apologize for the delay. I'm having some interesting camera issues. I'm sure you can tell I've got light on this side and I've got dark on that side and having a great time here. I'm trying to figure it out. I'll figure it out for next week. Anyway, just happy to be here with all of you and uh, happy to be able to see comments. I think today I pray I will get a comment today and I'll be able to see them unlike last time. So welcome, welcome to everyone. Monica Corrado here, The Gaps Chef. Um, I am here to help you uh, with the GAPS nutritional protocol. It is my joy to be able to be available to you once a week uh, at my, or as much as I can, <laughs> once a week to talk about GAPS and answer your questions. All right, so I thought we'd try a real live computer today since we had some wacky things happen with the phone last week. Um, yeah. All righty. Hello, Um Sumaya. Hello, hello, Kathy. Good to have you with me. And it looks like I can see comments this week. So that is fantastico. Happy about that. Um, yes, just a, a reminder that I am not a medical doctor. And my desire here is to be able to accurately um, um, explain the uh, GAPS nutritional protocol. Um, and to answer your questions. So without further ado, I would love to talk a little bit about um, the GAPS online conference. So exciting. I hope all of you have your tickets now. Um, I have spent several days um, uh, getting ready for the GAPS OnCon and uh, getting ready to present. Um, for those of you that don't know, the GAPS online conference or GAPS OnCon starts today. That is the day after tomorrow. And yours truly, yes, I will be teaching uh, three classes, uh, one cooking class, one other class, and then a, um, a meat stock uh, class, which is a bonus session for anyone who would like to watch it. Um, that'll be on Sunday. So there's a fantastic lineup of people. Of course, Dr. Natasha will be there. Um, yes, of course she'll be there. She's opening the conference a little bit early on Thursday, and uh, we are very excited to have her. I'm going to look up the exact name of everything so that I can uh, be telling you gapsoncon.com come go all right gapsoncon.com gapsoncon.com go there to register if you register with m corrado that's me m c o r r a d o 24 as in 2024 you will get money off of your registration you are welcome, I believe, to register for the entire thing, to register for just one day or two days or whatever, regardless of what time zone you're in. If you can't join us live, all of the recordings are available to you uh, for months afterwards. So you can watch it while you're making your meat stock or you are making your yogurt. You can listen to it when you are uh, doing the dishes like I do. Um, all sorts of things like that. So four days, this is called Raising Children the Gaps Way. What are we about, folks, right? Yes, it's for us and it's for the children, right? All right. No, 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 no. Okay, um, so it's Raising Children the Gaps Way, helping your child to be healthy at every stage of life. Yes. So my, um, uh, my, uh, one of my sessions is about um, GAPS fundamental recipes from preconception through teen, okay? And then I do another one for GAPS through college, yeah? So that's going to be really good too. 
um, or gaps in college, sorry. How do you do gaps in college? Is it possible? What types of things should you be thinking about? What kinds of tools are there? What kinds of things can you do? Etc. Etc. So, so much fun. It's the 15th to the 18th. It's starting early on the 15th, Thursday, the day after Valentine's Day, um, at 8.45 Pacific Time. So you have to do your own, like, time zone thing. With Dr. Natasha, special, special, special. All right, so what do we got? Uh, four days, 12 keynote sessions, seven featured bonus sessions, essential replay Sunday track, just for kids, GAPS Youth Movement, gym, GAPS Youth Movement, gym track, all sorts of great things. So, yeah, I hope, I really hope that many of you register. Um, again, you will have these things to watch uh, over and over and over again. All right, so I just wanted to give that to you. Uh, GAPS OnCon starts Thursday morning. Woohoo! So I hope you'll join us. It's going to be so much fun. And the platform that they have it on, uh, if you have it, uh, if you have a, a computer or a phone, right, smartphone, you can really interact with people. I'll be on four days. You can ask me questions. We can talk to each other. You can meet. You can ask Dr. Natasha questions. You can ask all sorts of questions of all these fabulous presenters that are going to be there. We're even talking about health for um, for the dads. Like, what do the dads need to be doing in order to have a healthy child? Preconception, folks, right? So my dear friend and colleague, Michael Gaeta, will be presenting. Um, Amy Mahali will be presenting, certified gas practitioner um, and family nurse practitioner and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of good people, lots of wonderful things all about, <clears throat> pardon me, all about um, gaps uh, and family life, which is what all you people are doing, right? Everybody's doing gaps and family life. All right, so I just thought I'd put a little plug in there. Um, I know that we started late and I'm going to go all the way until 1245. Um, gives us another half an hour. I will take your questions today because um, I started late. I had clients from the Netherlands, so um, I went late. So in any case, um, do, do, do come and uh, be with us for the GAPS online conference. It's so wonderful to meet other people that are doing this and learn about what are you using for toothpaste? What are you using for shampoo? How often do you make meat stock? Where do you get your the bones from? What are the best kitchen equipment? There's all sorts of wonderful things happening. So. All right, let's move on. So I just wanted to give that to you. Again, mcarado24, you can sign up, I think, at least until tomorrow night, midnight, maybe right through the conference. I don't know. All right, I'm going to say hello to everybody. I've already said hello to <clears throat> some folks. Hello, Kathy. Hello, Claude. Hello, Yasmin. Hooray. Hello, Laura. Hello, Rebecca. Hello, everyone. Good to have you. Good to have you with me today. So, hello, Faria. Great to have you. Good to have you with me. All right. Hello, Paula. Woohoo! You're finally home. I didn't know you were away. Were you away? I don't know. In any case, you're finally home. Maybe you're finally here. That would be fabulous. All right. Okay, folks. So, let's get your questions. Questions about OnCon, questions about water. We talked about water last week. Questions about meat stock. We talked about meat stock a couple weeks ago. Questions about culturing dairy, questions about lacto-fermentation. Oh, and by the way, also Star, who, Star Pen, who helped me last week with questions, she runs the JIA Blueprint Group, which is juvenile arth uh, arthritis. Um, yeah, she'll be presenting also. So fabulous. Oh, you fine. Oh, you usually work. I get it. Okay. Okie dokie. Oh my goodness. Where did we go? We went here. Get rid of that. Okay. You usually work. All righty. 
All right, looks like my frame metrics are not that good. I'm not sure why. I'm really not sure why. I've got a great signal and all sorts of things, so we're just going to keep going here. All right, so let's get your questions. How to store kefir or grains in the freezer? Hey, Michelle. How, good to have you. Uh, welcome to everyone that's here with me live. Welcome to everyone that's on the page. Welcome to everyone that is on, uh, finds these videos on YouTube. Uh, just a quick note to everyone, it looks like uh, Facebook is changing yet again, and we may not be able to do these anymore on our group. All right, stay tuned. Get on the YouTube for now, that's probably the best place. All right, so Umsumaya asks, how to store kefir grains in the freezer? Definitely store them in milk um, and then freeze them. And then when you want to reactivate them, put them in the refrigerator first so they can thaw. And then go ahead and bring them out uh, out onto, into room temperature and give them some more milk. You'll have to reactivate them slowly since you've frozen them. They got very, very cold. All right. Rebecca has... Wondering about your tips for doing full gaps while nursing and or pregnant. Thinking I probably have a yeast imbalance. I know you recommend lots of kefir. Kefir, yes, and cutting fruit and nuts. Is it the same recommendation you would have while nursing and or pregnant? And for how long would you recommend cutting those out? So, wondering about your tips for doing ba 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 nursing pregnant. Okay, so one of the things that we want to uh, think about when we are nursing um, is, and or pregnant, is we don't want to dump any, we don't want to, we don't want to initiate a lot of detox. Uh, certainly when you're nursing, you don't want to dump toxins into the milk. And when you're pregnant, you don't want to have a lot of toxins in the body, right? That are moving around the bloodstream. Uh, because, of course, you are creating this new baby in the uterus and using all that blood. Um, so, I would um, remember, Dr. Natasha recommends cutting out fruit and nuts. Yes, I'm speaking it. I'm the mouthpiece, but that's what she says uh, when you are have a yeast imbalance. Um, so, and seeds. Um, yeah, I mean, frankly, I would just make sure that you're drinking your kefir, um, two things. One, never, mm, I'll start with always, always positive, right? Always, uh, gradually increase things. Whether you're pregnant, whether you're nursing, or whether you're just new to gaps, or whether you've been on gaps for years or months or whatever, Whenever we bring something that could initiate die-off, like kefir, we bring it in slowly. So we don't go from, I've never had this, to I'm having a cup and a half a day. That's just, you're just asking for uh, feeling bad, <laughs> sorry, um, because of die-off, right? So um, you just want to uh, slowly bring anything in. And if you do that, Rebecca and everyone else, you're going to be fine. So, right, like slowly bring it in, a tablespoon at a time, a teaspoon at a time, whatever works for you, and work your way up. I mean, we have had so many beautiful moms with pregnant and nursing that are drinking a cup, two cups, three cups of kefir a day. No problem, as long as they got there gradually, right, gradually. That's really it. Now, in terms of cutting out fruit and nuts, Certainly cut out nuts. Um, if you feel when you are nursing or pregnant that you need fruit because of the vitamin C, which also, by the way, is in liver and is in sauerkraut and is in all of your fermented foods, um, but you say you want to have some citrus or you want to have some lemon or you want to have any of that, you know, listen to your body. I mean, I think those are the two points for all of us. Number one, gradually increase the amount of probiotic foods you're eating slowly gradually 
Yeah? And then we don't have a massive die-off. All of us should be doing that. Yeah? Number two, listen to your body. I mean, I was just teaching with Dr. Natasha two weeks ago, and she's all about listen to your body, listen to your body, listen to your body. Because once you clean up the toxins, right? Once you're no longer toxic, which of course is not really possible <laughs> for any of us, um, but once you really are doing things like eating clean food, it's organic, it's biodynamic, it's grown by your neighbor or your farmer or things like that, you have a wonderful supportive detox program that you're doing on a regular basis, um, and you've been eating that way for a while, you will be able to trust what, you know, you've cut sugar out, of course, you will be able to trust your body and what it's saying. So slow and steady, bringing in uh, probiotic foods and listen to your body and what it needs and what it wants. It is very wise. The article that, or the chapter, two things, it's an article on Dr. Natasha's website, gaps.me, and it's a chapter in the blue book, I think it's also in the yellow book, but I'm not sure. It's called One Man's Meat is Another Man's Poison. And it's really about listening to the body and what does it need. So I suggest that to all of you. I hope that's helpful, Rebecca. Okay, Claude says, after the detox... Da, 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 da. Ooh, look at all that that came in. Claude says to me, you said last week we need to rinse kefir grains after using them in cream. No, did I? Okay. After rinsing, can I put them right back into cream? I'm not sure I said that. Um, but, uh, but it might have been a different, a different video. In any case, um, so here's the thing. Dr. Natasha's way of making kefir cream or culturing cream with kefir is to not use grains. She suggests that you use milk kefir to culture cream. I suggest also that you could use kefir starter packet to culture cream. The reason that we don't, she does not suggest using grains to culture cream, kefir grains to culture cream, is that the cream is too thick. Um, and this is my understanding. The cream is too thick and it can clog, really coat the grains. And so therefore we won't get a really robust uh, kefir cream when we use grains. So my solution is if you really want to use grains, go ahead and use them, but rinse them in between so that they're not all, you know, clogged up. And, and hopefully that'll work well. All right. I hope that was helpful, Claude. I hope, hope, hope. Okay. Hello, Anna Lynn. Um, Mayo, which oil do you use? Tried combo of coconut oil and olive oil from Boynton Brack book, and it was not it. Yeah, mayo is tough. Um, I like to use, um, I like to use Mary Ennig's. I hope you all know who Mary Ennig is. Lipid chemist, co-wrote nourishing traditions with Sally Fallon um, of the Weston A. Price Foundation. And uh, she would use what's called Mary's Blend. Mary's Blend is a third coconut oil, a third olive oil, and a third of um, sesame oil, which is not, obviously, I hope obviously, not, um, um, what the heck do we call that? Toasted, <laughs> not toasted. Uh, right, so that's a third, a third, and a third that you use for olive oil. Um, I mean, for mayonnaise. The other option is to use an olive oil that is not as strong in flavor. So um, certainly, we only want to use very good quality oils on the GAPS diet. We don't have that many available to us because most of them are, mm, I will say, garbage. Uh, most of them are rancid in the bottles, um, etc. They're just not good for us. So um, I suggest, or we suggest on GAPS, coconut oil, <clears throat> pardon me, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, um, 
You can also use palm oil, although palm oil has sustainability issues that you'll need to look into so you feel good about using it. Um, and certainly sesame oil is fine. So that's what I would try. I would also say, Anna Lynn, that um, it's never going to taste like what you're used to. It's never going to taste like uh, Hellman's, which is now garbage. Um, sorry, <laughs> that was pretty strong. Um, or like, um, God, Hellman's, bring out the Hellman's or craft or anything we were brought up on because we are using real oils that are beautifully strong, right? They Olive oil has a strong taste to it. So um, one of the things you may want to do instead of mayo, this is fun to talk about. One of the things you may want to do instead of mayo is use um, cultured cream in your re recipe for making tuna salad or chicken salad or something. Um, you could also use, did you hear that? I'm going very fast today, I apologize. Um, okay, you could use cultured cream instead of mayonnaise. You could also use um, a beautiful, um, what does she call it? Uh, sour cream sauce, which is what, it's in Nourishing Traditions. It's basically cultured cream, egg yolks, yum! Cultured cream and egg yolks, maybe some dill and you just whisk it all up and you use that instead of mayonnaise. So we have to kind of do a couple things when we talk about mayo. One is give up what we remember mayonnaise to be, uh -huh. right? Like it's never going to taste that way because they're using soy oil, not Marion, not Boynton and Brackett, but you know, out there they're using soy oil for mayonnaise. They're using uh, canola oil for mayonnaise, they're using horrible things for mayonnaise, right? And so we have to kind of give up that it's going to taste exactly like that. And then the other thing is to use these other options, which are fantastic and delicious. I mean, I've made amazing coleslaw recipes with this uh, delicious sour cream sauce, which is basically just cultured cream, kefir uh, or yogurt cultured cream, and egg yolks. Oh, and a little bit of apple cider vinegar is in there. Oh, over the moon! Delish. Okay, I hope that's helpful. I hope that's helpful, Anna Lynn. And really just, you know, use proportions differently. Coconut oil and olive oil. Mm, the olive oil you use will have to be what they call everyday olive oil or mild olive oil. That's going to take some of that very strong, strong flavor out. Or you could also do something like make a chipotle, uh, chipotle, chipotle mayonnaise, or make a dill mayonnaise, or make a mustard mayonnaise, which takes out, takes away the strength of the um, very strong olive oil flavor. All right. All right, um sumaya, and how much milk? Uh, enough milk to cover by, you know, half an inch, or maybe an inch. Leave two inches, uh, or, yeah, no, leave a good solid inch in the jar between the top of the milk and the lid so that it has room to expand in there. Okay. Thanks, Faria. You're correct. All right. Avocado oil is not a GAPS oil. Really. Avocado oil, yeah, I would not be doing avocado oil. Um, if you want to know more about why avocado oil is not a good idea, I would go look at Louisa Williams, naturopathic doctor, Louisa Williams, ND. She's written a blog, really good research on avocado oil. I personally have never been an avocado oil lover because if you look at an avocado, where the heck's the oil? Not macadamia nut oil. Ah, frightening. All right. Good, Anna Lynn, I hope so. Hope it was helpful. All right. Hello, Leonie is here. Woohoo! She's digesting my traumas as you advise. Not easy. Blessings. Blessings on your path. Blessings on your journey. Everyone has trauma, folks. And if you're traumatized, you can't digest your food. End of story. So please go look at my tools for trauma videos. Um, and if nothing else, take some Star of Bethlehem, Bach Flower Remedy, or Rescue Remedy Bach Flower Combination Recipe. Oh, remedy. <laughs> Oof, okay. 
Alrighty then. Let's see. Aw, oh, you're welcome, Rebecca. I'm so happy that they are helpful. Yes. I know I'm not on the page as much as I as I I don't want to say should be, but golly folks, I'm I was really focusing on getting my filming done this past week for OnCon and now it's filmed and so now I can relax a little and go ahead and be on the page a little more. All right. Okay. After defrosting the kefir grains in milk, which were taken from the freezer, how should I reactivate the grains? Reactivation um, just has to do with doing a batch of kefir um, and then, I don't want to say throwing it away, but throwing it away and then doing another batch. Like do two or three batches until it comes up to its full strength. That's all. All right, where are we now? La, 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 we've got Michelle asking me a question. If I am allergic to dairy, okay, Michelle, welcome. Michelle, if it's not anaphylactic allergy, then you have a sensitivity and we include dairy. So I'm going to invite you to please look at every dairy video I've done, of which there are at least three. Some of them are sitting up in um, what's called guides at the top of our page. I've pulled some from YouTube uh, to look at dairy. Um, let's just, so I just want to say a few things. Number one, um, unless it's anaphylactic, we go ahead and do the dairy introduction protocol. So if you have an anaphylactic allergy, then we don't. We don't even try to introduce dairy, okay, just to be clear. Otherwise, we use the dairy introduction protocol, otherwise known as the dairy introduction structure. That's in my book, that's in Dr. Natasha's, both of her books, yellow and blue, very clear about how to do that. We also, um, we also change dairy. So again, within cow, we go from pasteurized to raw. Within cow, we go from black and white or A1 to A2, which is just traditional dairy cows, right? We go to traditional dairy cows, yay! Meaning brown cows, Swiss browns, Jerseys, Guernseys, uh, Ayrshires, et cetera, et cetera. If that doesn't work, then we go to goat. If that doesn't work, then we go to sheep. If that doesn't work, then we go to camel, right? So dairy is really important for everyone, especially the children, folks. You've heard me say it a million times. They need the calcium for both immune, their immune system, and for their, um, uh, for their bones. Your kids don't have calcium in the beginning of their life. Their bones are going to have pro are going to have problems with bones for the rest of their life. Calcium very important. Okay, so given all of that, Michelle, I know that was long. Uh, can I use coconut or something else? Uh, yes, you can use coconut. Um, however, coconut on gaps is homemade, which means you go and you grab a coconut, you buy a real coconut, and you hammer into it and you drain the coconut. So you use fresh coconut milk and fresh coconut uh, that you get from a coconut. Okay, good, better, best, right? Best, cow dairy. And I went through all which, how to do that, which species, etc. Coconut, best, buy a coconut, real coconut, make it yourself. And then if you can't do that, then look to um, coconut that does not have any guar gum in it. Folks, guar gum is a filler. It is not GAPS compliant. If you have anything in a can in your pantry, go read and make sure it doesn't have any gums in it. No guar gum, no locust bean gum, no carob bean gum, no pectin, no um, none of that, C-R-A-P, none of it is allowed on GAPS. So, that starts limiting you a little bit in terms of which coconut you could be using. All right, and then 
After that, you can look into uh, nut and seed milks. Always best to make yourself. Always best fermented or soaked or sprouted before you make them. All of that, Michelle, is in my book and all the techniques to do it. Um, I believe my book is still posted in featured posts along with the coupon New Gaps 2023, all in caps. All right, let's see. All right, so Reem Dabble. Hello, Reem. My son has milk and egg yolks allergy. How can I do gaps? Again, unless it's anaphylactic to either one of those things, then we carry on. We do the milk, the dairy introduction protocol, and we work with other eggs. So if it's, uh, again, if you're working, if you're trying eggs and he is, again, he can't have a yolk allergy because allergies are only to proteins and the protein is in the white, right? So he could have a yolk sensitivity and, um, yeah, what do you do? You go from chicken egg to turkey egg or duck egg or goose egg. Try a different egg, quail egg, because the proteins will be different. And you absolutely can do GAPS. That's what it's all about, folks. GAPS is about healing the gut. GAPS is about healing the gut. Let's heal the gut, and then you don't have your allergies. That's the point. Isn't that exciting? I love that. Okay. Claude, after the detox juice early in the morning, do we wait a while before eating solid foods or eat right after juice? Great question. Um, really good question. Everyone listen up. Here we go. Um, when you are using detox juice uh, or you are drinking a GAPS shake, right, juice or shake, you want to wait 20 to 30 minutes before eating. 30 is always better. Um, and also don't drink them unless it's uh, two to two and a half hours after a meal. So in the morning, you're fine because you've been sleeping all night, I hope. All right. And I hope you've been sleeping since 9 p.m. Okie dokie, here we go. Hope that's helpful. Hope that's helpful. Yes, castor oil packs. Yes. Let's see what's going on, going on, going on. Okay. Where am I? I want to make sure I've got everybody. Okay, here we go. When you talk about castor oil packs, uh, I have a pack for my waist. Can I try for my feet? Paula Marie Westcott. Hello. And everyone else. Castor oil packs are the number one. <gasps> no. Enemas are number one, according to Dr. Natasha. I'm going to put castor oil packs right there in terms of detoxification as number two. Yes, you can absolutely put castor oil packs on your, um, on your liver and on your feet. You can put it on your thyroid gland. You can put a castor oil pack on your, um, on your breasts if you have cystic breasts, right? Cysts in the breasts, etc. Anywhere you, you have pain in your hip, put it on your hip. You have any of these things, use a castor oil pack. Yes. I highly suggest that you look at drtomcowan.com has a podcast with Dr. Marisol. I'm going to say her, it starts with a T, her last name. Just look up, doc, just look up Marisol, M-A-R-I-S-O-L, castor oil on Dr. Cowan's website, and there's a wonderful podcast there. She's done all the science about how it works. Um, I love it, and I really suggest you take a look at that. All right. Yasmin asks, what would you, what advice, what advice, uh, would you advise if an ASD child need medical treatment which requires sedation? Is there any advice on what they should do before or after an operation? Yeah, sedation. Um, a tough one. I mean, certainly the GAPS diet is really going to support that child or anyone who has to go under general anesthesia or sedation. Um, I would um, come out afterwards, I would do a strong detox protocol, meaning, you know, whatever you can do, castor oil packs on the liver, um, Epsom, detox baths, certainly Epsom salt baths, um, 
Yeah, maybe some juicing. I would do I would do a detox protocol afterwards. I would also work with rescue remedy afterwards. Um, and I would look into emergency trauma solution, ETS, from Paralandra in Virginia. Yeah, I would look for ETS and give that to your child prior to and afterwards to help for sure. All right, we are going on and on. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's see. Laura, easier to digest, green lentils or navy beans properly prepared, of course. Um, they're both going to be good, uh, but I would go with lentils. You can use any kind of lentil, brown, green, black. There's all sorts of lentils, red lentils. Why do I say that? Because in general, lentils take less time to soak uh, or sprout uh, than any of those. So yeah, I would say lentils, any kind of lentils. Yes. And I have to say, folks, that I personally, in my home, I'm sprouting all of my lentils that I'm using because they, the body digests them so much more easily, better than soaking. Um, yeah, I would sprout any bean, any lentil or navy bean or yeah, dry green peas, all those things, limas, etc. Good question. Thank you. All right. Hamdi says, what's the alternative of milk if my child loves drinking milk? Yogurt with water in it. Kefir with water in it. Just, we remember that we don't drink milk because milk is full of sugar. So, use the cultured milk, which is yogurt or kefir, add pure water, you can dilute it, make it the texture uh, and the consistency a lot like um, what they're looking for. How exciting. Hope that's helpful. Uh, my daughter get, gets mouth sores whenever she consumes dairy, even raw dairy. Mouth sores are usually about calcium deficiency. I don't know, Paula, I'd need more information. But usually, right? So, yeah. Usually, mouth sores like sores have to do with the fact that the body needs more calcium. So that's that's odd to me. Not sure. All right, we got that. We got that. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm getting stuck on gap stage four due to gas going up towards my mouth immediately after drinking carrot or carrot celery juice. I am taking Swedish bitters, but the same problem. Uh, two things. One, go back to stage three. You're not ready. Um, Sumaya, you're not ready. Body's not ready. That's the first thing. Second thing is whenever we have gas, golly, I could talk about that for three hours, but um, the first thing I would look at is digestive enzymes. Bitters are great, but bitters are all about kicking up stomach acid in a good way. Digestive enzymes are about breaking things down. Yeah, so so gas doesn't form. Uh, could also be yeast that are having such a blast eating that carrot juice or carrot celery juice. Remember, carrots are full of sugar, folks. So... I would back it up, um, Sumaya, go to stage three for another mm, two or three weeks, four weeks, come back on to stage four and um, make sure that the carrot juice that you're drinking, that you're starting with a tablespoon of juice that's cut with a tablespoon of water, right? Slowly, slowly. Okay, you're welcome. Hello, Anissa. Good, good, good. I'm happy that's helpful. Hooray. Okay. Yeah, so Paula says in Italy she could have dairy with no problems. Of course. So there's your clue. There's your clue. 
everybody moved to Europe. No, I'm kidding. They couldn't handle all of us coming. <laughs> Not big enough. Um, so I would just really suggest that you skip the cow and go try the goat, uh, try the sheep, um, make sure it's, it's cultured long, and start with just a very, very little bit and do the dairy introduction structure. Yep. Okay, Claude says, is there any gap specific information for low progesterone? I hear about wild yam, but know that supplements are generally not recommended. So, you're welcome. So, um, in general, folks, what you want to be doing is um, for any hormonal issue, detox, detox, detox. The castor oil pack is really going to help on the liver. Remember, hormones and liver, meaning your liver and hormones are very much connected. I would also go ahead and... Um, be eating a lot of egg yolks and liver. Egg yolks, liver, fat, saturated fat. Egg, oak, egg yolks, liver, lots of saturated fat, like eight tablespoons a day. Don't start there. Work your way up, right? So, yeah. And then, and I would do that, I would, I would try to do, work your way up to having a, doing a castor oil pack on the liver overnight, every night for three months. Make sure you're having liver two or three times a week, two to three ounces. Make sure you're having six to eight egg yolks a day, every day, raw, Russian custard in your stock, etc. Yeah, and then let's see what happens with the progesterone. Alrighty, well my battery is about to die and we're over time. I am so uh, happy that all of you were with me here today. Um, are GAPS vegetable juices blah, blah 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 also? Yes, of course you can have GAPS vegetable juices and GAPS shakes on full GAPS. Absolutely, they're just another really good tool. Uh, use the shakes for gallbladder uh, and liver support and fat digestion. All right, I've got to go plug in. All the best to all of you. And, aw, oh, thanks. That's very sweet. I love being with all of you also. I do hope to see you all at the GAPS OnCon. And, you know, we could be texting each other. Wouldn't that be fun? All sorts of questions answered. All right. Take good care, everyone. And I will see you next week. Same GAPS time. Same GAPS channel.